Awesome Your Awesome Podcast. And now give us some insights here, like help us understand, because I know, you know, most of us have heard of EFT, but we don't really understand it. Can you help us understand the science behind it? How does it actually work? Yeah, absolutely. So what we've discovered over the years, and I'm one of the early people trained, I got trained in 2014, and that's sort of old school now for for EFT. And um, so it's been fascinating, actually, to watch the research uh, body really develop over time. And they've done a lot of work taking people's blood and saliva pre and post tapping. And one of the things they found is that it shuts off the body's production of cortisol, our stress hormone. And also they've hooked people up to EEGs and measured their brain waves and found that it really quickly moves people from a beta brainwave state, which is sort of our relaxed state that we function in, into an alpha brainwave state in minutes. And alpha, for those who aren't familiar, is the brainwave state we are in in meditation or uh, if you're a yogi, shavasana, that's alpha. Most people only enter alpha before we're falling asleep at night. So it's just that kind of woozy, relaxed state that you are in. So what they realize is that by stimulating these particular acupressure points that we use in EFT tapping, not other points they've done research on, is it? Other points are, you know, just tapping on the body. No, it's definitely these particular points that have the effect on the biochemistry. When we tap on these points, it appears to send a calming signal to the amygdala part of the brain, the fight or flight part of our brain, and it shuts it off. And when that happens, what happens is when you get emotional, your blood actually constricts to the mid and hind brain, the emotion centers in the brain, and it drains from the frontal lobe. And the frontal lobe is our logic, reason, judgment kind of part of our brain. And when you are uh, frightened or angry or in any heightened emotional state, that is what is happening inside your head. When you start tapping while in that state, it relaxes the body enough It moves us from our sympathetic nervous system to our parasympathetic nervous system, and the blood flows back to our frontal lobe. So we're suddenly able to think more clearly and access our wisdom and knowledge in a way that we were not able to do when we were upset. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is so fascinating. So now, okay, I know one of the things I'm going to ask them kind of like, um, silly, I won't say dumb, because I know there's no such thing as a dumb question, but some silly questions that you're probably like, okay. But I know one of the things EFT is known for is clearing blocks, right? Like things that in your subconscious that you might, the narrative, whatever the story you've been telling yourself. Yep. So it seems, help me understand this. So when you're tapping, you know, you're saying it like releases that the uh, stress hormone, Mm -hmm. but is that not a temporary thing or in order to release blocks, do you have to be doing this all the time in order, right? It's not like you can just do it once and then you have some kind of shift. Well, actually (laughs) that can happen. And here's the theory as to why that happens. So if you have, let's say you have a, um, a neural pathway created between some childhood events and your present life. So um, we'll just take a real basic, a phobia, like a fear of spiders. You know, when you were a little kid, a spider fell on you, you got freaked out. Now you have a fear of spiders as an adult. If you tap on that fear of spiders and you clear it, what happens is it sort of extinguishes that neural pathway, that neural pathway that saw spider and moves you into fight or flight gets eliminated and a new one forms. And so it forms to the frontal lobe. And so then you can think of spiders and not have that fear reaction anymore. And that is a permanent change in your brain. So I personally have tapped with people on their phobias or their traumatic memories going on now almost a decade ago, and it has never come back. 
for the people that I've stayed in touch with around it. And it's pretty remarkable. I mean, I tapped with my own son who was seven at the time of my training on his fear of the dark. And it went away that night, never came back. And also he had a fear of going in the basement, even in daylight. And that went away too, even though we didn't tap directly on that. But in our brains, there's generalizations that happen. You know, there's sort of crossover of neural pathways. And so you generalize things. And so you can clear one block and it might actually clear other blocks in your life that you weren't even intending to. But because of the way the brain is set up, it just can have that effect. So you could, for instance, clear your fear of public speaking, let's say, and suddenly your um, hesitation to, I don't know, go out and go out on a date or something, because I, I work with a lot of dating women, right? Like that could clear up too, even though you weren't tapping on your fear of going out on new dates, you were just tapping on your fear of public speaking. But because in the brain, it might've been closely related, it can have that kind of impact. This is so fascinating. Um, so, and I want to get into the dating thing with you, but so, you know, can you give us a little guidance here? So, I mean, really you need to be working with a practitioner for it to work most effectively, right? Cause I know there's like videos and things all over YouTube and I don't, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I tend to make the analogy of the difference between brushing your teeth and going to the dentist. So if you start to learn EFT as a self-help tool, and yes, it's really easy to learn. There's tons of resources, especially on YouTube and things like that. If you start to learn it as a self-help tool and you start to use it on the regular, and I'll, I'll name a couple of ways I recommend using it. What you're doing is you're actually calming your nervous system overall, and then your nervous system is going to get acclimated to a calmer state. I mean, when we are in stress all the time and we're like up here and super stressed out, we get used to that. We actually get addicted to our own um, chemicals that our body produces, the epinephrine and the cortisol and all that. We get addicted to that so that when we become calm, it feels weird. It's like, oh, when's the other shoe going to drop, right? And sometimes our minds will create problems to get us back in that stress mode because our body is comfortable with those hormones and with that stress mode. So what I have noticed is when you tap on the regular over time, your body gets more, it's, it's just like meditating on the regular over time or doing yoga on the regular over time. Your body gets more used to that, more comfortable with that. And then your body starts to actually crave that state. So for daily regular tapping, what I suggest is times that are great to do it is when you're in the shower in the morning and you're already ruminating on your day or your problems. Like that's just a time a lot of us do that. You can just do a little tapping in there. When you are uh, driving in the car on your commute, you can hold the wheel with one hand and tap one handed with the other hand. That's a time a lot of us are thinking about our problems. When you're on the phone with a friend and you're already venting about all these different things that you're stressed out about in your life, perfect time to tap. You know, if you're not on FaceTime, they're not going to know. So you can go ahead and tap. And what you're doing in those times is you're sort of like clearing out the accumulation, right? The brushing of the teeth. But if you want to get into the deep stuff, you know, you're not going to fill a cavity on your own, right? You're not going to like do a real deep tartar, like scrape off on your own. You're going to let the dentist do that. So that is when I say, go to a practitioner. So if there's some deep-seated trauma, childhood stuff, um, a phobia that just won't seem to shift. Like maybe you do tap on it a little bit and it's it's not shifting. Um, there's lots of people who use tapping for addiction stuff to quit smoking, or I personally teach a weight loss class. So we use it on, on you know, eliminating cravings for junk food and things like that. But there are times that those things have really deep roots. And that's when you want to work with a practitioner. A couple reasons why it's when you start tapping, you are kind of stirring the pot, which is good because we need to feel to heal, right? I'm sure a lot of your listeners know this. We need to like go through the feelings to move beyond the feelings. It's unfortunate, but it's just the way it is. And so we need to feel in EFT tapping to be able to clear these feelings and these blocks. But if you 
open that Pandora's box and it's a little too much or a little too overwhelming, that's when you want to work with a practitioner, especially like if you're working with trauma, you want to make sure they have trauma training in EFT, not just regular EFT training and things like that. And you want to work with someone who knows how to ground you, how to keep you safe, how to keep a container around the work so that you're not just walking around feeling like a mess for the rest of the day after you do some tapping. And that can happen because like I said, it does start to stir the pot so it can stir a lot up for people. And now, you know, when you're tapping, so it's not like affirmations. It's almost like you're acknowledging the negative stuff to release that, right? You're almost like saying, I'm, I don't, I can't think of an example right now, but. Right. No, absolutely. That is, that is the thing. And that is the thing that a lot of people, I notice a lot of people sort of too in the, in the energy uh, field and, and doing this kind of work have some resistance to the EFT for that reason, because we are acknowledging the negative. We are starting with the negative. And I know a lot of people are really into affirmations and affirmations are great, but you know how sometimes you can be working with an affirmation for a really long time and it does not shift. You know, it just really, you just feel stuck around it. You just think, gosh, you know, I've been saying this to myself for months on end and nothing's happening. Well, that's a clue that there's a deeper subconscious root to why you cannot shift that thing that you're trying to shift. And so you have to really get to the root. It's like digging out a weed out of your garden. If you just chop the dandelion off at the top, it's going to keep growing back, right? So the tapping can help you manage your day-to-day anxiety about something. But if you really want to clear it, you want to clear it for good, you got to get to that root and dig it out. And that is where you have to get your hands a little dirty, right? You have to go into the negative to pull it out. EFT doesn't work unless you're actually feeling an emotion or a feeling. You have to be in that heightened state of emotion for it to calm down. So when you think about it, when you're tapping on these points, what you're doing is you're basically pouring water on a fire. So if there's no fire, you could tap all day and it's not going to do anything. So sometimes people, I, I work with some people who are really, maybe really intellectualize their problem or they're really sort of emotionally cut off. You know, we, we all use a certain amount of dissociation to deal with life, right? But if you're emotionally cut off from what it is that's bothering you and you tap, it's actually not going to have any results at all. You're, and that's where I, sometimes I'll get people and they say, well, I've tried it. It hasn't worked. And typically that's why. That's why it wasn't working for them. And so I actually work with my clients very carefully, very safely to move them into a more heightened state of emotion so that they're actually feeling their feelings. Then we tap. Because remember, the stimulating of these acupressure points sends the calming signal to the brain. So the brain has to be a little agitated to send the calming signal, to flip the switch and turn it off in order to create that new neural pathway. And most people will say after they tap on a phobia or a traumatic memory or something, they'll say, wow, it doesn't even feel like my issue anymore or my story anymore. It feels like someone else's story because they're not getting that fight or flight trigger. You know, when someone comes to me and they say they want to work on, let's say, a car accident that they experienced. Well, they'll start telling me the story and you immediately see people when they go into fight or flight, right? Their eyes bug out, they lean forward, they tense up, they, their voice gets louder. You know, you see that when we are remembering something traumatic, our brains do not know the difference between being back in that trauma and being in the here and the now. And so you are immediately at a sort of biochemical level back in that traumatic state when you're telling those stories. But then when you apply tapping to that traumatic state, it suddenly moves it out of the fight or flight. So you still remember it, but you don't have that physiological reaction of the sweaty palms and the bug eyes and the, and the rapid heart rate. You don't have that anymore. And so you just feel this immense relief and freedom once that is gone. This is so interesting. So, okay, hypothetical scenario here. Like, let's say someone is an insomniac. So is it recommended to do this before sleep? Like, this is so kind of counterintuitive yeah. on some level, right? Because let's say you you stress out about sleep, but then 
would you recommend the person be tapping before sleep and kind of activating some of that fear around it? Well, so remember that tapping puts you into an alpha brainwave state and alpha is the state we have to go through. We have to go from beta to alpha, to theta, to delta. That is how our brains go to sleep. So yes, I can, I would recommend tapping before sleep, but not necessarily tapping to process what stresses you out about your insomnia. That I would say is different. And that is probably best done with a practitioner, right? So that would be done sort of separate and not right before bed. However, right before bed, what you can just do is just tap and breathe and not say anything and not be sort of trying to target anything, but simply be using the tapping in that case to get you into that alpha brainwave state so that you feel more relaxed. With a practitioner, you would want to work with someone to really get at the root of the insomnia. What is it that is causing this pattern for you to creep up? And I'll give you a quick example, even though it's on a different topic, but I was working with a woman on her craving of sweets and we were tapping on, she would bring something. I actually was doing a group and every week, everyone from the group would bring some kind of treat and we would tap on it. And very quickly, you don't like the taste of it anymore. It's really amazing. It's just incredible to see. Um, because a lot of why we crave sweets or junk food, salty, whatever, are psychological reasons. And once you clear those, you don't really want it anymore. And actually, you can taste its true self. So most people say it tastes like cardboard or chemicals or something like that. So we were tapping every week. She would bring a new food. We would tap on it. It wouldn't taste good to her anymore. But then the next week, she would be on to another food. And she identified it. She said, it doesn't it's not about the food I'm realizing. It's not about the food because I keep switching the food and it's like a new food then crops up that I'm craving. So it's something about the sweetness. So we did a one-on-one session and we started tapping on that. And what she realized was she was, she had come over here from another country and sweets and baking and all of that was something that she had done with her family of origin at home. And when we started tapping on this, what came up was her immense sadness over her homesickness and missing home and really wanting to cultivate that feeling, that home feeling here in the U.S. And so she was using desserts to try to get that feeling within her. And once we tapped on her grief of her loss of home and her you know, just sort of her despair over the homesickness. Once we cleared all of that out, then she was able to no longer overeat on the sweets department. I just, I find this so remarkable because you never really, it's so often not what we think it is, right? We don't realize what the root of whatever is holding us back from something actually is until we start kind of going deeper and acknowledging Right. And that's what I love about EFT tapping, because remember how I said it puts the blood back in your frontal lobe. So you have these insights and these aha moments because you're actually your brain is just functioning better when you're tapping. And so these things can come to you that you realize are really deeply impacting you. 